So today yes. we're here with uh, Jack and Sean from Woking. Could you tell us a bit about yourself? Sign off with Jack. Start with me, yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, current Woking player. Um, been there last two years now. Um, currently work at Nike as well, part time. Uh, sorry, full time. So that's my full time job outside of uh, football. Uh, and yeah. Playing right back this season. Um, I've got my dad and my girlfriend over my shoulder laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Sean here as well. But yeah, so currently, currently playing right back, but usually a centre half. Um, but yeah, enjoying enjoying the season um, that's just been, uh, and looking forward to get going again. Sean, um, I'm a tennis player playing football. <laughs> uh, no, I mentioned that I'm a player at Woking, um, centre mid. Uh, yeah, so just bang on centre mid, mate, to be honest. All right, so we'd start off with your childhood. Uh, what was it like growing up? Uh, was you like a massive football fan? Jack? Yeah, I, I live about 20 minutes from, from Arsenal Stadium. So growing up, um, I was living during, when I was growing up, it was the, the right years to be an Arsenal fan. Uh, living about 20 minutes from Highbury uh, during the Invincible era. So First fell in love with football, just going to the, the victory parades around around Highbury at the time. And everyone at school was an Arsenal fan. And so just getting it into football through watching that great Arsenal team and, and you know, everyone at school doing the same and, and playing that way. Um, then first started playing uh, just locally and then went to Charlton at a very young age and was there for a few years before getting released. But... Yeah, great time growing up playing football locally and then having the chance to play at a, a top academy as well. What, but, did yeah, you just I've get into during like, school? Yeah, that was it. I think my dad first took me just to the park. There was a, a local kids session um, and then just developed from there into school and then beyond. But yeah, right, glad Sean. to see you wearing the Arsenal shirt as well. Sean? Um, yes, similar to Cookie, just playing. I played Sunday League until I was about 14. Um, my mum and dad didn't want me to go to an academy until I was 15, 16, and then I joined, I got scouted by West Brom, um, signed a professional deal, deal there, was captain for the 18s, 23s, um, until I was about 20, 20, 21, maybe. Um, so yeah, no, I I, play, I enjoyed my school football and Sunday league, and then um, when I was a bit older, I joined an academy. But other than that, I I probably enjoyed school football and Sunday league football the most, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think look, looking back, the best best times playing football were at school. You can't be even now <laughs> playing. <laughs> yeah, sixty seconds playing Wembley. School football is the best. Jake. Would you say, um, Sean, would you say not going into an academy until you were what, 15 helped you get to where you are now? Or do you think if you got to in an academy before then, do you think you would be better? Um, no, I don't really believe in kids going at a younger age to academies because stats show 99% of the players in the academies get released anyway. So it doesn't. I don't feel that really makes much of a difference. As long as you're practising and getting the hours in, um, I think that's the most important thing. So you said that you were uh, around football as a kid. Was it hard to change into like football life how it is now from a kid? Uh, no, not really. I think it's obviously when you get older, you think about things a little differently. When you're younger, you just think about playing football. But now 
you have your it's, it's a wage it's a job so you got to get paid from it as well so um, yeah, you look at it in different ways jack what about you and firstly, I, I'd agree with Sean that, you know, I probably got in, I did it the opposite way around to Sean. I probably got into an academy way too young. So I thought first academy was, what, year six, so 10, 11, and had a few years of training too often, too far away from home. And it was a strain on my dad and, and family taking me and taking time out of work to, to take me to those sessions. And if I look back now, I wish I'd done it a lot later, like Sean's route, and, and enjoyed my football more locally with my friends earlier rather than going down the professional route. Um, but in terms of the, how the mindset has changed from playing kids' football to now, I don't think it does change considerably, apart from, as Sean said, having bills outside of football and, and needed to pay for those sort of things. But I think the same feeling applies when you walk out on a Saturday onto a grass pitch as when you were younger doing the same thing with no kit the wrong socks that kind of thing just now we've got a full kit um, it's more professional we've got proper linesmen and referees which is which is a bonus but the the mindset and and the way I enjoy football has remained the same was it uh do you think you your ability would have changed if you uh went to an academy later it's hard to tell really um I, I, there's always a part of me that thinks what if I'd given it a great go. I went down the kind of, after having got released, uh, I didn't really try to push on with my football as much as I probably look back and think maybe I could have done, but you never know what can happen in life. You know, I, I took a different route. I went to university, I got a degree um, and then found football again back at Woking and have gone a different route. And I always say that, you know, if I'd, as Sean said, 99% of players get released. So what if I had not done university and gone straight into football I wouldn't have a degree to fall back on. Potentially wouldn't have been able to get a job at Nike as a result of trying to push on too much. So you never really know. Yeah, I could have been a better player, but I could have still been released. And I'm very grateful for the decisions I took to, to stay in education and, and do that side of things as well. Jake? George, keep going. I went blank a minute ago. I forgot what I was going to say. All right, so moving on uh, to, let's say, your woking time right now. Do you think... Uh, well, how do you think it's going? Because obviously the season's now officially been voided. Uh, do you think maybe you could have got promotion if uh, it carried on? Go on, Sean. Um, we were in a good little position, weren't we? I think we had a game in hand um, towards the playoffs. Um, promotion would have been crazy, but no, nobody knows what would have went on. But for a part-time team in that league to even have a chance is is a good effort in a way and a good achievement so yeah no we've done well this year so we'll see what happens next year Jack I mean Jack. sorry I've got loads of back row now um, yeah sorry um, I think I think we would have had a good chance to to get in the playoffs for sure and then who knows what can happen um, well, I think yeah Sean said we were only what three points off with a game in hand and yeah. um, a favourable favourable run in as well so it's disappointing not to be able to see where we actually got, um, but a good season all round nonetheless. Jake? Do you think Woking was underestimated in, in the league that you're in? Do you think the teams that are, that are full-time teams, do you think they underestimated you and thought, oh, it's just another part-time team, that they're not going to do much? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think we were just a good team. So I don't think they underestimated us. I just think we, we were just, um, we went through good foot. Good for good spells of, of form. So um, yeah, that's how, that's how I feel our success went this year. What do you think? Yeah, happened? I agree. Oh, go on. <laughs> no, go on. go on. I was just going to say the same thing, basically. Oh. So go on. <laughs> uh, what do you think happened to the season? Because obviously you were doing amazing during the beginning, and it slowly dropped off. But obviously you're still in the top top half of the table. But what do you think happened? It's, it's, it's a hard, hard one to tell, you know, all teams go in, in waves of form and, and we probably were, when we started the league, we, we probably, you know, not many of us have played at that level before and, and we were the same team. So we probably had a bit of momentum coming off the promotion and having a good pre-season as well. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the quality of the league, uh, the fact that everyone else is part-time probably just caught up with us a little bit towards Christmas as the game started coming in thick and fast. We had a lot of 
cop competitions as well. A lot of friendlies <laughs> that we had to play as well. Um, but yeah, it was probably just a case of um, we we were on a bit of a high from the previous season coming into the first start of the season. And then we probably got a little bit complacent at times and we're going away to games that we thought we could win easily, um, which we shouldn't have done being a part-time team. But yeah, um, just waves in form. You know, we started to pick it up towards the end, had a few good wins away at Halifax and that kind of thing going into the playoffs. So I'm sure we would have done better um, going into the final few games and then who would have known what would have happened during the playoffs. Anything else, Sean? I think um, at critical times of the year, we had it because our, our squad wasn't overly big. Um, we didn't have the depth, especially around Christmas time. We had loads. I think we had quite a few injuries around that time. And um, as a part time team, we, we probably found it difficult through that period. We, had, um, we were lower numbers and we couldn't train often. Yeah, that was another thing. Being a, being a part-time team, um, we don't have a proper training facility. So when it, when it rains or snows, we had nowhere to train for about two weeks. So that didn't help at all. So yeah, I was going to say, do you think Woken as a club can move into um, going full-time soon? I don't think they need to. <laughs> well, <Cookie> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get you get two different opinions here. I don't I don't think um, the way football's going at the moment, the way football's wages are going, and um, with obviously everything that's happening with coronavirus and potentially not being able to get gate attendances and that kind of thing for a while, I don't think football needs to go. I don't think Woken Football Club needs to go full time um, anytime soon. If they wanted to compete in the league and and you know, try and win the National League um, then, then potentially to get a better squad um, and more training in, in play, then yeah, it probably does need to go full-time. But I think how well we've competed this year um, just proves that you don't need to be full-time to, to do well in this league. Sean? Yeah, no, I, I <laughs> Cookie said to be fair. But I, personally, I'd like to go full-time. But Cookie's right in what he said. Jake? Do you think if Woking Football Club did go full time, would you would you still stay there? Like Jack, you you said you're working with Nike at the minute. Would you still stay there, or would you leave the club so you could still work with Nike? I I I don't think I. It's a tough one. Um, I don't think I could play football full time at the moment with my work commitment. So that would prevent me being able to stay at Woking. I'd I'd probably look for the the next best um, semi professional team in and around where I live. But yeah, if they, if they went full-time, I, I don't think I could give it a go. I'd love to, but work's um, a longer-term commitment that I need to... <laughs> I just bought a flat as well. I got a mortgage. <laughs> nah, Cookie's one of the special players. He'd be all right. He'd come in two days a week. He'd be all right, Cookie. Well, yeah, if, if Dallas allowed me to do that, then yeah, I'd stay <laughs> if it was full-time. <laughs> John, do you... He'd bite your hand off, mate. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to stay. Yeah, George, back right, to you. So, um, the last game of the season, uh, according, you got a goal, Jack, because obviously you were you you were losing. What was the? Because obviously, the Heidi's won it. <laughs> oh, Sean, that's one of my quiz questions tomorrow. You know, oh, really? how many go- how many goals did Jake Hyde try and steal? So get try and remember, you can get some points there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, that was my goal, by the way. It was mine. Don't listen to Sean. <laughs> so, what was you? Because obviously, you were you were losing the game, and eventually, you lost it three-one. Uh, so, was there like, was it like not scoring a goal at all? Or yeah, I mean, what was the f- it's a, go- a goal is a goal. It was my only goal this season, so I'll take it. Um, looking back in a few years, I don't think how it happened or. All that kind of thing will be remembered. But yeah, disappointing to to make my first goal of the season two one down and then eventually lose three one. Um but I was glad to score and at the the, the time of the game um, it mattered a lot, but eventually it wasn't to be um to, uh, the turnaround that we wanted. So Talk about Sean's goals though. That, uh Sean <laughs> you've played for uh Ireland, the uh under twenty threes, I think. Yeah. And you've uh bagged a goal for them. What what was you thinking scoring for your national team? Um that's probably my best feeling in football to be honest. That that moment it's a last minute winner. 
to top the, I think it's to stay top of the group with only like three, four games left. So um, yeah, no, that was that was a surreal moment to be honest with all my family there as well. What was it like when, like, the next day, the day after? Did you still believe it, or was it like not sunk in yet? I was hungover, to be honest. So. <laughs> <laughs> I went out. I went out that night. So um, yeah, no, I was I was hanging the next day. Jake. So you two seem like you get along very well, but would you say you have any other friends like that you've met through football? Um, Go on, Sean. Let me I've pick got, up the got... names he drops here. <laughs> uh, just a few, just a few. <laughs> nah, I, to be honest, I don't. I don't really. Um, I've got a few that I get along with. Um, Cookie's one of them, and there's a few others, but. Um, I think football is one of them. If, it's hard to keep in contact um, when you leave different clubs and stuff. People have got their own lives, and unless you make the effort or they make the effort, it's difficult. Difficult at times. So um, I've got I've got one or two, but not many. No. Why are you, yeah. Jack? Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I mean, you know, at a club like Woking, players come from all over to play for Woking, so it's very hard to stay in touch with with everyone from the team and from from past seasons, but you've got you've got two or three friends that you stay close with and and talk to, and often, quite often, you play against some of the guys in different teams that you've grown up playing with, and, and you can speak to them and see them again there. But you know, it, it is hard and, and difficult to to keep friends with everyone that you've played with. Um, luckily, I, my girlfriend lives near Sean, and so he picks me up every now and then to take me to games. So that's where we get to to see each other and, and hopefully play a few games of tennis while we're in lockdown still. <laughs> and now the restrictions have got lifted. But yeah, Sean says it's you've got players that you still speak to every now and then, but it's difficult to, to see them as much as you would like to. If it does go, the club go, does go full time and Jack, you do eventually go on to just go into Nike. Do you think you guys will still be mates? Yeah, definitely. I Me and Cookie get along well, so um, yeah. We'll play tennis now and again, I'm sure, and I'll get a few few freebie tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, me and Sean went to uh, with with work. I get a few tickets to quite a few games. I know Sean's a Liverpool fan, so we went to went to West Ham Liverpool a few weeks ago. And if um, if I was to leave, or if, if if it was the other way around, then yeah, definitely try and get to a few Liverpool games next season with Sean. Anyway, Jake. Oh, George, go on. You carry on. All right, so um, we're going to talk about what do you think about the, the future? Because obviously, Jack, you don't know if you want to play f- uh, football full-time yet. But uh, Sean, what do you think? Do you think maybe if a team came in from maybe abroad, you, would you take it? Oh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Hot weather. <laughs> yeah. Get hot yourself to Australia. Back. Get yourself Australia. to Sydney, lad. <laughs> that, that would be lovely. Um not at the moment, no. I'd I'd like to stay in England, and maybe in years to come. Yeah, I definitely. I want I want to live abroad when I'm older. So, um, so definitely, but not 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 anytime soon. I want to stay in England. What if a uh, team from England, like Championship, maybe even Premier League, came in for you? Would you take it? Okay, I could have done that. Whatever happened, but <laughs> touch wood, one day it, it might happen. You never know. Um, but. I'll, that's a no-brainer, of course, yeah. Do you think you have the ability to play at that level? I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I don't, I've never played that level, so I wouldn't know. Probably not Prem, maybe Championship if I'm lucky. But you just never know. Jack, do you think uh, if you did go down the football route, do you think you would go for a te- big team if they came in for you? Yeah, I think everyone would, wouldn't they? Um you know, I think everyone's dream, even now, I'm, I'm 27 this year. I think the dream is to still play as high as you can. You just got to be realistic sometimes and understanding that, A, probably not going to happen for me at this age. Um, and two, I can't really give it my all at this stage because I've got other commitments work-wise and, and, and that kind of thing. But if, if yeah, if a, if a big team came in for you then you, you'd always have to give it a go because you'd live to regret it if you didn't give it your best shot what if you didn't get the game time you wanted obviously Woking you're getting quite a lot of game time would you rather 
take the game time or pretty much take the money? Take the money all day. <laughs> what sure, about you? Yeah. See, uh, I'm not like Cookie in that sense. I, I'm all about the game time. <laughs> <laughs> you liar. No, I'm joking. No, I, in, in all honesty, I, playing football is the, is the best thing. Money's, money's not the, the be end and end all. Um, you play to play football, but you know, if the to to, tra- to train with the best, um, and and if you wanted to move higher and the money was better, you'd be playing with the better players, and, and you'd you'd develop yourself, and you'd have a full fitness regime. So, yeah. What about a um, League One team? If they came who, in. Who, which... who? I haven't got an agent, so if you fancy giving it a go, if you think it's this easy, it would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it for you, Cookie. <laughs> Who you got lined up? Just a few, mate. Just a few for you. All right, brilliant. Now, yeah, I mean, it would have to be the right club, the right time, the right location, that kind of thing. But yeah, Jake. Going back to obviously money and football, would you say that bo- that money is just a bonus for playing football? Jack. Um, uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a byproduct of something you enjoy doing. Um, obviously, the you kind of if you watch the top level and and you see some of the the money that those players are on, it feels like they're just doing it for the money. Um, but essentially, all those players have grown up loving and enjoying football, and the money is just a byproduct. Those players have played more and trained more and worked harder. Um, because they love the game and money is just a result of of something they enjoy doing and and that's the same with us you know we get paid to play which is a privilege but essentially if I wasn't getting paid to play I would still be rolling out on Hackney Marshes on a Sunday morning probably hung over as Sean was after the Ireland game enjoying (laughs) playing football with my friends but it just so happens that I can do it at a level where I am able to get paid but I mean, I'd pay, I'd pay a tenner in subs to play if I wasn't playing for Woken. So it definitely, for me, is just a, a byproduct of something I enjoy doing. What about you, Sean? Uh, yeah, look, it's, it's, it's important because it's my full-time job. Um, so obviously I need to get paid from football. But if I wasn't getting paid, I'd still play football because it's, it's, it's what we're all good at and what we enjoy doing. Uh, you just said that you uh, that is, uh, you don't have another job. Would you say that you class football as a job? Because obviously it is, but would you class it as a job or you class it as like a bit of fun? No, no, it's, it's my passion, isn't it? It's what I've worked since, obviously, when I was young, practising every day to get to a stage. And I've I've been involved with full-time football. It's the first season I, I haven't been involved. So, um, um, yes, so no, I know. I find it's it's a passion, but also you got to get paid by it as well. Do you class it as a job, Jack? Because obviously you've got another job. Do you just is that your main job? Would you say football is your hobby? Yeah, football is well. I I'd say it's both. I'd say it's it's a hobby, but we do get paid, so it's seen as a job. Um, but I can tell you, there are times when I've when I've done my full day's work on a t- Tuesday night. And I have to go and train in a wet, know. cold, Someone dark pitch. You're a trainer, boy. <laughs> <laughs> when it when it gets to that, and and you know, it definitely doesn't feel like a hobby. But then when you win on a Saturday afternoon, um, all that training is is well worth it, and and you and you can tell it's just what you enjoy, and and the feeling of winning is is better than anything. So you put up with those dark nights where it doesn't feel like an enjoyable hobby um, to win on a Saturday. Uh, obviously, you've got Tuesday games as well. How is that? Is that hard working into your other job? It's all right. It's it's. I think one of the, the we had to play Yeovil away on a Tuesday night, and I just have to manage my time at work around those sort of days. So I have to take two days of my annual leave holiday um, to get there, travel up on the day, and then you're getting home at four or five in the morning the next day. So it's very difficult to to get up and get motivated to work. So I just have to plan my time around around football, which is fine. That's what I enjoy doing. Um, and just and and also the the company that I work for, we we sell a lot of football product and I work in the in the football part of the business. So 
they're very accommodating to me playing football and, and that kind of thing. I think in the in the game we had at Watford last season, there was about thirty people from my office there to watch. So it just shows the the amount of support I get and um, how they're all very interested and, and supportive of my football career. So if there was an afternoon that I needed out of the office um, for a match, they, they'd happily allow me to do that. Talking about the uh, Watford game against Woking, uh, how was that, obviously, waking up in the morning knowing you're going to be playing against a big Premier League team? Yeah, it was it was great. Um, it's probably once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, you know. I've, I've never even got to the first round of the FA Cup before. Um, so to get to the third round and get a Premier League team on TV was, was a dream come true. I, I, I would have loved to have been able to go to a big ground. Um, but it was a home game and it had a, a very nice feel for all the fans and to get the, the money and the gate attendance and, and everything like that for the club has probably helped them survive this difficult time now. So, yeah, it was great, great personally to be able to go experience that and then also for the club to be able to, to survive the difficult times that we didn't know was going to happen back then. Um, but it's probably set us up to be successful next year where other clubs might not have had that FA Cup run money to, to carry on. So, no, it was a, a great experience. Would you have preferred to play that game away, Ben? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I would have played. I would have preferred to have played Liverpool away, but <laughs> we got Watford. So no, it was good. It was good. I think it would have been good to have drawn that home game to then go and play away as well and have both sides of it. But wasn't to be. They were way too good. Uh, uh, just overall, would you say you prefer home or away games? Both for you. Sign off with Jack. It's a tough one. Um, I mean, some of the, the grounds and attendances that you get at some of the away games that we've had this season, I think Notts County was a, a particularly exciting place to go and play at. Um, again, Yeovil had three or 4,000 there on a Tuesday night. It was very loud. Chesterfield, again, you get to go to some of these big grounds and experience um, the facilities and the, the noise and, and the stuff that you don't get in the league below. I mean, if I was the biggest league in the league below, is not doesn't compare to the the, the best team in in our league in terms of the facilities, the ground, the attendances. So we've been very fortunate to go to some of those grounds, but to play in front of your own fans is is the best feeling, and to to go out every Saturday in front of your home crowd and get a win is is there's no better feeling because some of the away games, although it's um, they're big attendances, it's difficult to get as many Woking fans as you get at a home game to a Yeovil on a Tuesday night. So you want to play in front of as many people supporting you rather than against you as possible. So I definitely prefer home games, I think. Do you let the away fans get to your head if they're like giving you a bit of slack? <laughs> I try not to. Uh, I think this season was the first time that I'd actually play in with, played with my name on the back of the shirt. And obviously on the first day of the season, I was buzzing, walking into the change room, seeing my name on the shirt. This is great. I think the first, we was Dagenham and Redbridge away, weren't it, Sean? And I walked out and someone just goes, I won't say what they said, but it was directed at me because my name was on the back of the shirt. And I was like, ah, oh, this isn't so great. I'm going to get this the whole season now. Whereas before, no one knew your name and you could just get on with it. And if someone shouted anything, you didn't know it was directed at you. But now you definitely do. But I don't let it affect me at all. I think Sean can tell you, I, I'm not, I don't really get um, aggressive or, or <laughs> offended by anyone, to be honest. What about you, Sean? I get offended by everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah. probably, probably the same Same with Cookie. Um, you don't really hear them much when you're playing. You're probably just more focused. And do, do, I know it sounds, it sounds quite boring, but you're just focused and trying to perform well and help, help your teammates. So you don't really, I don't, I don't really hear much. To be honest, you hear the atmosphere say you score a goal or you've got momentum, but you don't really hear people slagging you off and, Thank God, because I probably get that a lot. <laughs> yeah, you lucky you don't have to take throw-ins, mate, and go right down yeah. the touchline. <laughs> do you think if you do get that little bit of hate, that like motivates you, makes you play even better? Um, I don't really see much of it, to be honest. I don't really look at the social media side. I think that's where it happens nowadays. So I, I don't really look at that type of stuff. So um, I don't really experience it, especially at this level. You don't, you probably don't get. You don't, well, you don't get any abuse, really. Maybe if you perform badly, they might shout a few things at you. But as long as you give 100%, they shouldn't 
I don't think fans, especially at Woken, they don't do that as long as they can see your your work in ours. So, no, I haven't really experienced it. What about you, Jack? Yeah, same really. I think I think the Woken fans are great, and and as long as you're showing that you're working hard on the pitch and and sensible off it, then there's no problems at all. I think yeah, to Sean's point is. Social media and the pressure at the Premier League level is extreme and, and probably would uh, make a lot of people very nervous about playing on a Saturday or scared to. But at our level, it's freedom to play um, as much as you like. And I've never experienced any form of um, hate or anything like that online or, or on the side of the pitch. So, yeah, I can't really comment on what it's like to, to receive that, to be honest. Okay, going back, uh, the Watford game, was that one of your best games, like the best game you've played in in your career? Yeah, I'd probably say so, yeah. In terms of number of people there on TV, um, have my family there, have my colleagues there, it probably was the, the best moment I've had in football so far. Sean, would yours have been the uh, Ireland game? Um, probably the best moment was the Ireland game, but my favourite two games, funny enough, was... Portsmouth away when I was at Walsall on loan and um, funny enough because I had such a terrible season the previous year just through injuries and just dealing with different stuff probably the first game at Dagenham I just really enjoyed it it was like it was a big build up through pre-season and to try and start the season off well and I really really enjoyed that win. Okay uh, my last question so uh, Jack you said you were an Arsenal fan would you ever go to Tottenham? (laughs) <laughs> oh what if if it was Tottenham or no one Hold yeah. on, we'll um, well, stay where you are now or Tottenham what, Tottenham or Woken yeah uh, yeah yeah I probably would you know um, if there was the opportunity to play in the Premier League I think you have to be a bit personal um, when it comes to team rivalries I wouldn't celebrate if I scored against Arsenal that's for sure but if there was the opportunity to play in the Premier League, even if it was for a rival, then yeah, I think you have to take that opportunity. What about you, Sean, with uh, Everton, if Everton came in? Yeah, man. I'm there. <laughs> yeah. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, no, obviously, no brainer, like Cookie said. No brainer. Jake, you got anything else? Going back to away games, would you say some of these big grounds, like, well, big ground, like, would you say the grounds like um, Notts County, do they t- intimidate you a bit or is it just like nothing? Um, no, it doesn't. I don't think it intimidates players. I think it's what you what you look forward to, playing in front of big crowds and stuff. It's what every little boy's dream is to play in front of a big crowd and experience that atmosphere. And Yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's alleged to be honest. Yeah, I I'd agree. I don't I don't think it it almost I'd say it probably motivates you more to to want to do well and and play better and and just look forward to going to play those big games because you know last season I keep saying it last season we were playing at Western Supermare in front of fifty people and and to be able to get promoted and go and play in Notts County you just got to enjoy those moments and and try and thrive off the atmosphere rather than get nervous because if you get nervous and don't play as well as you could have. You could be back in the, the league below playing against Western Supermares again. So you've got to enjoy it and just try and thrive off it. Is there a ground that you uh, want to go to? Like, uh, obviously, most people is Wembley. Is there a ground like more personal to you you'd want to play at? For me, it would be Highbury. But that's uh, a block of flats now. So uh, that's probably yeah. uh, difficult. Um, no, but yeah, I think Emirates for me... Um, being 20 minutes from where I live and, and growing up and supporting Arsenal and still getting to as many Arsenal games as I can on Sundays and midweek, I think it would have to be Arsenal. So next season, when everything's back up and running, um, yeah, I'll take Arsenal in the third round of the FA Cup all day. What about you, Sean? Uh, Anfield, 100%. Yeah. Anfield, yeah, definitely. definitely. All right. I think sure, I'm we'll go watch the game there soon, yeah? yeah mate, definitely. <laughs> Jake? I'm all out, mate. All right, go on, Jake. So, we're all out, and, um, so, and the, I think the time of the, the thing is almost done. So, 
thank you for coming on and it's been nice speaking with you and we wish you we wish you the best for the rest of your careers thank you cheers much, guys the ledge. thank you all the best thank you, cheers, all right. guys. Thank you for coming on. bye thank you guys all right, cheers. Bye. stay safe bye.